Hi, I'm Chris Oatley. I'm a character designer at Disney by day, but by night, or more like mornings actually, I am the co-host of the Paper Wings podcast. Uh, I'm also the creator of Greg the Mega Beaver's prehistoric sideshow, which is my webcomic. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about pitching your comic, crafting a great comic pitch. I'm going to share with you the most common flaws that I encounter when I hear people uh, pitch their comics to me, and I'm going to share with you some tips that will help you overcome those flaws or avoid them altogether. Uh, a strong pitch sells more books, a strong pitch grows your readership, a strong pitch is uh, the, just the bridge to a great many wonderful things. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm going to just uh, tell you a quick little story here, a little anecdote. My friend Lee Wiley came to the studio the other day to have lunch, uh, and uh, he brought me a copy of his new book, Expiration Date, which is very, has got a very cool concept. And uh, yeah, so he came by the studio. He was on his way to WonderCon. And he had a booth at WonderCon, and he was going to obviously try and sell books and grow his readership, but uh, he also wanted to find an editor or a publisher to pitch his book to uh, uh, with the, you know, in the hope that he could find somebody to uh, publish the remaining books in the expiration date series. And so I said to him, Lee, can you, can you do your pitch for me? And uh, he said, well, I don't really have a pitch. And uh, he goes, I just tell people, kind of just start telling them about the story. And I was like, well, can you? Can you, how do you do that? How do you tell them about your story? Can you tell me that? And he said, uh, well, I just basically say, you know, it's a sci-fi thriller set in the future. And I just went, whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> that's, that's uh, stop right there. And uh, I said, do you know how many times they're going to hear it's a sci-fi thriller set in the future this weekend? God knows how many times. Countless times they are going to hear it's a sci-fi thriller set in the future. Uh, I said, you have a great idea, a great concept uh, behind your story, uh, and you don't, you don't want to just throw that away in the first line. They can take one look at the book and tell that it's a sci-fi thriller and that it's set in the future. I mean, they can tell that just from looking at the cover. So why you don't need to waste time telling them that. What you want to do is you want to find the human point of view. You want to engage the universal human emotion that is kind of core to your story. And so for those of you listening, that's, that's true for you as well. You want to find the universal human emotion that is at the heart of your story. And uh, Lee, the, the universal human emotion that's at the heart of Lee's story is the fear of death, uh, which is <laughs> it's pretty universal. So, um, you know, we were able to zero in on that right away. And we had this great talk about it. And uh, after some more effort and thought and kind of reflecting on these uh, questions, Lee was able to craft a really, really good pitch. Um, and uh, I'll give you a link to that uh, just at the end of the video here. So I find that a lot of comic creators actually don't know what the heart of their story is. And while that is an entirely, that's a whole other issue. Uh, in fact, you can go to paperwingspodcast.com and read our article on finding the theme of a story colon Almost Famous, that's the movie Almost Famous, um, that, that'll actually help you kind of find the, that, the heart of your story if you don't know what it is already. But assuming that you kind of had, you started out with some sort of uh, universal human emotion that was sort of driving you or sort of entered uh, your writing process at some point uh, that you're even remotely in touch with, if you, can, if you can find a way to engage that universal human emotion uh, that is core to the story, it's at the heart of your story, in the people that you're pitching to, uh, you will be remembered. You'll make them want more. They'll be more likely to buy a book. They'll be more likely to publish you. They'll be more likely to sign your mailing list or read your webcomic or whatever your, your goal happens to be um, behind pitching the book. Okay, the common flaws of a comic pitch. Number one is the pitch starts with genre generalizations. Say that five times fast, right? Genre generalizations. <laughs> it's like it's a sci-fi thriller set in the blah, 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 blah. Or you know, people try and get more specific by sort of implying a mashup of some sort. It's a film noir with aliens. Uh, and yet 
all of the time it seems to it's just too reductive it it doesn't rarely i don't think i've ever encountered um a, a, a genre generalization that actually helps the story and, and especially most of the time if we're talking comics it's evident in the imagery anyway so you don't you don't need it I think this is actually uh, a, a pretty bad way to start a pitch because it, immediate, it immediately it makes generic any originality that you have put in to your story. So try and avoid that, okay? Uh, uh, number two is the pitch is bloated with world building and techno babble. <laughs> if you're really going to engage the universal human emotion in the person that is listening to your pitch, uh, it's it's highly unlikely that the term whatever, I don't know, some sort of your Norga tickle skeptolocticers, you know, that's a great sci-fi term for you there. Don't steal it, I'm going to use that someday. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, okay, techno babble, see, yeah, I see, I already lost you. Um, uh, yeah, so you, you will just, if the word doesn't have meaning to those people already, if the name doesn't have meaning, if the gadget doesn't have meaning to people already, if they're a fan, that's fine. If they're a fan of the book, throw around all the techno babble you want to, because that's kind of fun. That's the geekery that's fun to get into, but that's after you understand the book. If you're trying to introduce someone to your book, the last thing you want to be doing is going, see, these people are called the Nars Goblins, and they're the, you know, and nobody cares. What we care about is the universal human emotion. We want to have an experience. We want to be hooked into the story. So ditch the techno babble, ditch the world building. Don't worry about, you know, find that universal human emotion. Find the human point of view in your story, okay? Flaw number three is uh, you basically just start uh, telling a fast a faster version of the story, like like fast forward version of your comic, uh, uh, which is basically just an abridgment. You know, that's a synopsis. That's not a pitch. A pitch should hold the potential for plot. You know, the the, the pitch is not a fast forward version of your plot. I hope that makes sense. Um, you need a way to share the heart of the story. Uh, and then that will give them, like a good movie trailer, will give them the sense of what the comic could be, but that you're not actually just like spelling it out scene by scene. Now, there is a time where it might be appropriate to share a scene or two or three, depending on how uh, interested the person is, but that's uh, for later, and I'll get to that in a minute. Flaw number four is you can't pitch the story without the book in your hands. Uh, you have to, you know, you need to, to open it up and flip through and point to things in order. In other words, the person, in order for the person to understand it, they need a visual guide. Again, if we're talking human point of view, if we're talking universal human emotions, we need to have, uh, we need to be able to access this with this idea and the story without imagery. Now, the imagery is awesome. No doubt this is something, the imagery is something that's going to help you sell your book. Uh, of course, of course, of course. The, I mean, we're making comics here. The drawing is a huge part of it, but we're talking about, um, I'm, I'm talking about how we, we often c try and cover up our weak stories with images, and we don't have to do that. If we really want to grip people emotionally, you know, the visuals are going to wear off after a while, or it's sort of a taste great, less filling kind of thing, and we don't want to do that. We want to engage people with the story. So uh, make sure that if you're that when you when you prepare your pitch, that you're able to do it without the book. If you have the book with you, great. I'm not saying don't pick it up and and show and tell. That's wonderful. But uh, but make sure you're able to do it without the book, um, both for practical reasons and for the reasons that I've already talked about. Practical reasons being, what if you don't have your book with you? You still want to be able to to know that you're going to 100% grip that person with the kind of the emotional truth, the universal human emotion that is ignited when, when you give your pitch. Flaw number five is your nerves psych you out and uh, you just stumble over everything and you just kind of pull different pieces and you repeat yourself. Uh, you, you're, you're, you do a lot of mashing up at that point. It's film noir, I mean, it's aliens. It's, you know, you're, you're grabbing all these movies and just trying to make sense. And what ends up happening is you sort of go off the rails and then the person being a, a charitable, a generous, kind person kind of starts asking you questions and they end up trying to make sense of the pitch for you. And they kind of, they kind of coach you through writing your pitch on the go. Uh, and that usually comes from a lack of preparation, but that also comes from not really understanding what the heart of your story is. So, uh, uh, and, and not being, not knowing, you know, the bullseye is that universal human emotion. You need a quick, 
catchy, clean, rehearsed, memorized pitch for these kinds of high stress situations. That way if you're completely nervous then you still have something rock solid that you can just spit out like a robot and you know that even if your brain is completely somewhere else because your nerves have just shut it off and you're in fight or flight mode, you know that your mouth can just automatically uh, 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 say distribute that pitch and that the pitch itself is so good it's still gonna engage the universal human emotion. So you're, you're okay if you go robot suddenly. <laughs> nervous, nervous robot. <laughs> um, for the next section, I'm actually going to use an example here as I start to get into uh, how to find the human point of view. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Back to the Future. Marty McFly, Doc Brown, if you haven't seen it, pause the video, go watch it, and then come back, and this will all make more sense. Time travel! Space travel, actually. I'm in my wife's office now. It's a long story. I'm going to give you four steps to engage the universal human emotion that is at the core of your story and activate that in the person or people to whom you are pitching. I'm going to give you four steps to engage the universal human emotion that is at the core of your story and activate it in the person or people to whom you are pitching. Uh, step number one is find the human point of view. Now, I've already talked about this in the video, so I'm just going to give you an example. Here's how I would find the, or here's how I have kind of explained the human point of view in Back to the Future. Marty McFly is the teenage son of an alcoholic mother and a pushover father. He has the potential to be a successful, responsible family man, but his rebellious tendencies could completely wreck his future. When Marty is sent back in time 30 years, uh, his own mother falls in love with him instead of his dad, and unless Marty can get them both to fall in love, he will be erased from existence. Uh, this would make you want to watch the movie right now. It's, it's uh, such a good story. So oftentimes the universal human emotion is found in the presence of a universal human fear. Okay, so if you're looking for the universal human emotion, oftentimes look for the universal human fear that is in your story. And in the case of Back to the Future, there are a lot of universal human emotions at work here. We've all felt disappointment with our parents or parental figures. Uh, we all have um, made rebellious decisions uh, to, you know, despite the consequences and, and regretted those consequences. Uh, we've all wondered what our parents were like as teenagers, and we certainly all understand the fear of being erased from existence. And so if you can identify, now that sometimes this is a problem actually with the story, if this isn't present there, but if, uh, if it is in your story and you can identify it, uh, it's really good to, to uh, focus in on that kind of universal human fear. But what makes it even better is if you can actually zero in, focus in on a, a fear uh, that is worse than death. <laughs> if you can find a fear worse than death uh, in your story, that will really, really help to uh, propel uh, the, the, the story and help to really make the pitch compelling. Uh, in the case of Back of the Future, obviously being erased from existence is basically death, but uh, what actually amplifies the tension in the story is the fact that Marty, remember the photo and Marty's brother and sister disappearing? Uh, there's actually consequences that extend beyond his own life, so even if he could make peace with his own death, uh, inevitable death, uh, it's his family, his, his, potentially his whole family could be erased from existence, or God knows who else. So um, there's, there's extreme consequences that are worse than death. Uh, for Marty, and that just really gets us on the edge of our seats. Now, granted, I didn't put that into my pitch, uh, but I didn't put a lot of things into my pitch, so a lot of it is about choices, and I guess this is as, as good a time as any to say that, you know, you will have multiple versions of your pitch that are short ones to just hook people and longer ones for uh, other circumstances, maybe the back of your comic or, or that kind of thing, and then other ones still that are longer and have kind of room to go into other things, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, with Lee's story, expiration date, uh, it, you know, it has at its core this idea of not only the fear of death, but the idea of unjust death or death, premature death. And uh, so I encourage Lee to focus in on that in that sense. That's definitely a universal human fear. So I was encouraging him to, um, you know, to really, really focus in on. Step number two is avoid world-building, techno-babble, genre generalizations, and 
basically proper nouns. You'll notice in my Back to the Future pitch uh, that I didn't, I made no mention of the DeLorean or the flux capacitor. I did mention Marty McFly's name because that, it's so catchy and kind of funny, it evokes the ironic tone of the movie. Uh, it also would have been appropriate probably to include the DeLorean in that pitch as well because, again, that's sort of the irony. So it, it, it evokes something of the tone of the story, but I opted to not to just focus in on the parents and the fact that he time travels. That enough is sort of an oh, wow. Uh, and, this, and, the, and really the heart of the story isn't the DeLorean. It's, a, it's about the Marty parents' story, at least in the first movie. So um, that, that was a choice there. The point is, is you want to engage what they're familiar with, what they already understand, and then they'll learn about all the cool techno babble when they actually read your story as you introduce them to that through the story and through the eyes of the characters. Step number three is focus on the character. Who is the character? Uh, how are they flawed? What is their passion? And why do we care? These are good questions to ask about your character. Um, the character is everything. The character is the plot. The character is the theme. The character is the story. And so you should focus on that in your pitch. Uh, we like people. And that, that could include even if they're animals or aliens or whatever. It doesn't really matter if it's a person-like per If it's a, a sentient being with a personality, we're going to probably be drawn to them. Whether we, they're a likable person or an unlikable person, it usually doesn't matter. We're just drawn to characters and we identify with characters. So that's the... The, you want to create the core of your pitch around that character. You'll notice I did that in the Back to the Future pitch. I made Marty, the, the pickle that Marty finds himself in, and uh, uh, the core of the whole pitch, and then I engaged, try, did the best, my best to engage as many different universal human emotions as I could without it getting bogged down and cluttered. So step number four is keep it short but open for conversation. So uh, you want to be able to do any version of your pitch that's, whether it's the you know, one sentence pitch or the two sentence pitch or the five sentence pitch, uh, you want to be able to do that and then have it, like I said before, um, carry the potential for the plot. And then if somebody seems interested, they will either start asking questions, which that's just easy, then you can just answer their questions. But even if they don't, but they just seem interested or they just want to know more, then you can uh, start in on actual scenes at that point. But you don't have to speed along. You don't have to do the fast-forward version of the entire story just hoping that they're going to like it. Now you know they like it and you can take your time. So maybe you just tell the opening scene to them and just describe it to them or you kind of talk them through it in the comic. But you see now it's it's free to, to kind of work like you can just kind of keep telling them as much as they want to know, and uh, the fact is, if you've engaged them that much, they're probably going to buy the book. So, uh, yeah, keep it short, but open for conversation. Okay, a couple of uh, bonus tips uh, quickly before we wrap up here. Uh, one, seem like you care. I see too many people pitching their comic, and it's just like they could they could care less. If you can't get passionate about your story, no one else is going to get passionate about your story. So you your and your passion will be contagious. So 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 lean into that. Um, step number two is uh, don't be a circus act. Uh, a lot of people spend all this time and money on crafting these gimmicks, especially when they pitch to editors or or movie people or TV people. In the in the animation industry, you know we we just pitch as normal people. There's no gimmickry or weird outfits or anything like that. It's not like an episode of American Idol or something. You know, it's like we just we just tell a great story. If you spent all your time on crafting a great story, there's always time, there's always more time to spend on crafting a great story. And if you just focus on that, then you're going to engage people and you don't need a bunch of uh, uh, pyrotechnics or whatever. Uh, and then tip number three is this book. If you go to paperwingspodcast.com forward slash cat three, that's C-A-T number three, uh, you can uh, buy this book and we'll get a, a percentage um, uh, in support of us. No extra cost to you. But this is Save the Cat Strikes Back uh, by Blake Snyder, and this is a really great book. This is the third book in a series, uh, the Save the Cat series, and it's, it's excellent. But the reason I bring this book up is because it has a section at the beginning where there is a, a, a log line template. And the log, uh, this book is about screenwriting, but it's great for comic uh, uh, creators as well. Um, 
the log line is basically the short pitch for a screenplay and he literally has a template where you can go and fill in the blank with the different parts of your story and your character and it helps you kind of organize all your thoughts and get kind of the condensed version of your story together and then you obviously you can rewrite it and make it more original so it doesn't seem template-y but it just is a great way to help you organize your story and zero in on this universal human emotion. Last tip, uh, one, one more, go onto YouTube, watch people pitch their comics. There's not a lot of strong stuff on there and you'll see these flaws happen over and over and over again. And uh, so I recommend you do that and, uh, and you can actually learn from that. You can learn from other people's mistakes, which is uh, uh, healthy. Um, okay, check us out at paperwingspodcast.com. And uh, of course, if you go to paperwingspodcast.com forward slash con pitch, C O N P I T C H, uh, you can download the free cheat sheet for this video. It's got notes about the stuff that I talked about, as well as you can see Lee Wiley's uh, revised pitch for his comic expiration date, the new one that he came up with after we talked. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.